Um, it's been an interesting journey for this team, uh, starting as the number one team in the country and then moving into winning 11 straight. And we have some veterans, uh, in our, especially in our everyday lineup. But I think a lot of our younger and new players just thought that this is the way it is. And, you know, we went on the road in March, and I think we played 10 out of 11 on the road. And we, we, we took some hits, so we lost one of our starting pitchers in Tanner Witt. We had to have guys step up. And then, you know, the distractions and handling the frustrations of moving from 1 to 10 to completely out of the polls, which the polls don't really matter so much to me, but – you know, it becomes a measuring stick for so many people, uh, media, fan base, and all. And a um, little devastating for our team. But the thing that was mo most impressive with our team is that they didn't get caught up into it. Neither did our coaches. And we never got frustrated to a point where players or coaches started pointing fingers or um, creating animosity between the two or each other. We just continued to play we just continued to think that we're going to get better every day and we did and uh, we shored up some things in our rotation we shored up some things in our bullpen and the one constant or the two constants for us throughout the year has been a tremendous defensive team and a very good offensive team that um, we want to make sure that has the ability to not just hit the long ball, but to have the ability to score in, in multiple ways and have a mentality about our team that, um, you know, we're going to fight to the end. And I think a great example of, of doing really well at home in our regional, but going on the road was also a piece in the super that uh, I think continued to help this team grow and understand that they can do anything they want if they just keep together and keep working. And they did. Uh, backs to the wall all the way through the super. You know, Trey hits the big double in the se second game of the seventh inning, down by five. Uh, a lot of teams check it in, start thinking, you know, we had a great year. You know, start thinking about the draft, start thinking about other things. Uh, but this team never did that. This team just continued to play and uh, created the breaks and created the things that got them to Omaha. So I'm very proud of them. Okay, we'll start with questions for the student athletes first and then we'll hold off on questions for coach Pierce until after that Mike we'll start with you <clears throat> excuse me Michael Presti NCAA.com for both players the past doesn't mean a lot at this point but when you are wearing the uniform of a program that has been here 38 times does the legacy and being part of that drive you guys at all is it something you ever think much about Trey <clears throat> yeah I think it does um you know Obviously, you have past players and throughout the year that come and support us all year and, you know, have our backs. I think, you know, we always talk about it, but it's a lot bigger than just our team. It's about, you know, the program and the history of the program. I mean, I think that helps us as well, you know, knowing the history of what we've done, what, you know, the university has done. Um, I think that helps us, you know, in those moments where Coach Pierce said, you know, we're, you know, we're down by five and it's not just us fighting. It's the, the program we're fighting for, you know. Um, so I think that's a, a big thing. I think that that legacy and that dynasty is much bigger than our team and, and will forever be much bigger than any team that, you know, one singular team in the, in the year. And I think that's what the best thing about our university is that the tradition it has is, is, is it's huge. Sops. Yeah, just to top off what Trey said, you know, part of the reason we come to Texas is because of that history and that legacy. And the name on the front of our jersey means more to us than anything. And we want to make our alumni and, and our organization, our, our team proud. And uh, each time we step on the field, we know what we're representing. And so, Anytime, like Trey said, anytime we're in a tough situation, we, we know we can fight out of it because teams have done it before. And coming to Omaha 38 times, you know, at this point, it's it's expected, and we want to come out here and perform and, and do the best we can for our, our alumni. Okay, right. Yep, back here in the back here first. Uh, Mark Garland, CWS 247. Silas and Trey, you guys as a team leaned hard on the home run ball early in the season. Seems like the second half of the season you guys started hitting the ball in the gap. Do you think that helps you guys coming into this big ballpark not having to rely on the long ball? Uh, yeah, well, I guess the long ball we never looked at as part of our, a huge part of our game. You know, it just kind of comes for us because we build ourselves to, to hit line drives through the middle of the field. And 
early in the season, it just happened to go out for us, and it, it all worked out. But we know that we have a good offense, and we know that we can really hit and really produce runs in multiple ways, whether it's bunting people over or hitting singles or doubles or homers. It doesn't really matter. So coming over here, I think we're prepared. Yeah, I'd say the same thing. Um, you know, back in Austin, you know, we have a pretty big ballpark ourselves. So, you know, trying to hit a home run doesn't always work out for us. I think there's a lot more times that we're, you know, trying to take our singles the other way or, you know, hit doubles in the gap like that. So um, I think it helps us, you know, being in an environment like this where it feels a little bit bigger and the ball may not travel as well. Okay, right here in front. Joe Cook, Inside Texas. Trey, when you all <coughs> boarded the, the buses yesterday, you all had shirts that had keep going on it. And it kind of speaks to what uh, Coach talked about, how y'all got here. So where where did those come from? Uh, who put that together? And just kind of what does that mean to this team this year? You want to say it or you want to say it? I think I, I, hear it. I, I don't know the real answer. I think he asked for you. All right, well, um, for being completely honest, um, we were in an inner squad before the uh, beginning of the year. And we're, me and Ivan on defense, and we're just kind of messing around at this point. We just started like rapping songs in the middle of the um, inner squad. And there's a song, it's called Every Chance I Get. And it says, keep going in it. And uh, I kind of just, you know, was jokingly said it. And then little by little, kind of just kept saying it. And then eventually the whole team kind of caught on. And now we use that on our t-shirt. And every time we're down or, you know, uh, someone's battling AB, we just say, keep going. Because, you know, obviously it's the rap song. But, you know, in other words, for baseball, it's, you know, we're fighting to the end. We're never going to stop until, you know, we're out or, um, you know, the last strike stone, last out. Um, and I think it's kind of resembles, you know, everything we've done this year. We just kept going and kept fighting to the end. So, your response to? Uh, I mean, a similar response. You know, I, I can recall a time we were at Citadel and just took three straight losses to South Carolina, two to uh, college, college of Charleston. And those are tough for us. You know, that was our first time really hitting adversity this year and had to come to Jesus meeting, whatever. And, we were at Citadel, and you could really tell that we were all pulling together at, at that time. And even after that, we struggled a little bit. But still, during that time, I remember I was on first base, and I forget who was hitting after me, but they were just working in that bat. And it was the first time the whole dugout was just yelling, keep going, keep going, keep going. And you could tell that the, that the hitter wouldn't give in each and every pitch. And it was really it was really nice to see that. You know, I think we built off of that since then and put on our T-shirt. You know, that's, that's how we're going to go about this World Series. We're going to keep going. I appreciate you guys clarifying that for me as well. <laughs> Travis. Hey, it's, uh, Travis Brown with the Bryan College Station Eagle. Uh, I, I know a lot of people buzzing about the way that the brackets uh, uh, formed this year. Curious for, I know you're focused on the first game, but for, for the second game, what, what that means, uh, what the possible matchups could be either way for, for both y'all on the field and for your fan bases that, that might be coming up to, to see that game. Silas. Um, like you said, you know, we're really focused on the first game and the first pitch. and. Our main focus is to take it one pitch at a time. But like you said, if you want to look into the second game, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, that's why we come to the University of Texas is to play those storied and rival programs like, like OU and A&M, whichever one it is, you know. But it's going to be a lot of fun. We know it's going to be a great atmosphere, and that's what we live for, a great atmosphere. And we've, had, we've played in front of great crowds all season, tough ones and ones that are supporting us. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be a lot of fun. We have respect for both of those programs. Troy. Yeah, you know, go as Salah said, um, you know, to play those teams, obviously we played them, you know, in, in the regular season. But to play them, you know, on the biggest stage is going to be a lot. Um, you know, we're going to have a lot of fans and a lot of hype around it too. Um, but you know, the first the first things first, another day we're worried about that, and that's our only focus right now. Um, so you know, once we get there, then once that point, then we'll worry about them. Okay. Uh, Mike Patterson, Omaha World Herald, uh, talking about that first game for both players. Uh, Texas and Notre Dame, two great uh, universities with great traditions. Just talk about playing the Fighting Irish in that first game. Yeah, uh, we're really excited to, to play the Fighting Irish. Can't recall we've ever played them before, but we knew that we were lined up with them last year, and they fell just short. And we know they're a great, great team, very experienced. Uh, but we have a lot of experience, too, and a lot of Omaha experience. So we're going to rely on that, and we're going we're gonna to play our game. Troy? You got to say the same thing. Um, you know, they're obviously really good. They're here for a reason. They just came off of, you know, really good Super Regional. So, um, you know, they're, they're a good ball club, and we respect them. And, um, you know, we're excited for the matchup and to finally play, you know, get here, play our first game, and, and you know, get, get ready. Okay, right here. Yeah, Max Olson from The Athletic for, for Silas and Trey. Um, obviously, people see the, the numbers that Ivan put up this year, but what impressed you guys just in terms of his process this season and, and kind of from, from how much you know him, kind of the things he did the, to, to be so successful this year? 
Uh, yeah, I'd say, you know, the, probably the, the craziest thing is that, you know, you see some people have, you know, a good week or two, but he's had a good, I don't know, five months. So uh, that's the craziest part to see, you know, just continuously doing it. And, you know, it's almost like you go to the ballpark your day and he does something even crazier than he did the game, the game before. So that's honestly been the funnest part about it. And uh, off the field, you know, just how, how he carries himself, you know, you would never think that, you know, he's the home run leader and he's batting, you know, whatever, he's batting 420 and going to win the golden spikes, as he should. Um, so, you know, to see that and to have him, uh, you know, be on our team is, is special and see it every day and just watch him work and all the things he's come through, you know, even since last year and, and to where he's at now, it's, it's special to watch. Yeah, just kind of like Trey said, you know, he comes to the field every day, level-headed, uh, never has his success on his mind. He only plays to win, and that's the greatest thing about him is every time he shows it to the ballpark, he wants to help the team win. And he's, he's never caught up in his own. He, if he goes over four and we win the ball game, he's just as happy as if he went four for four. And uh, that's the greatest thing about him, you know. We know what we're going to get each and every day out of him. Uh, he's the greatest player in the country for a reason. And he's going he's gonna to do great in the College World Series. And, you know, he, he's the best player, but he works like he's not even close. And that's the greatest thing about him is each and every night, you know, he comes in after practice, puts in the extra swings, puts in the work. And that's why he is where he is right now. Okay, any more questions for the student athletes? Anything for Zoom? Nothing? Yeah. Okay. Okay, right back here in front here. Uh, Noah Darling, CWS 247. How does playing in that Greenville Super Regional kind of prepare you guys for Omaha better than playing at home like you guys did last year? Uh, yeah, I'd say, you know, having our – our backs against the wall, you know, that first game, after losing that first game, I think it really helped us. You know, it's the it's same format kind of here as a regional. Um, so I feel like that, you know, really helped us. And obviously, you know, not being at home and having the comfort of your own fans and, you know, own bed, all that kind of stuff, I feel like it's really helped us or will help us, you know, coming in the College World Series. Um, you know, obviously playing some, some tough teams and their experience as well. So it's going to be, you know, fun to watch and fun to play with. Yeah, and, and playing in front of that crowd, you know, they had a great atmosphere over there, very, very loud, very active, you know, and, and uh, they were on us the entire series, whether they were winning or losing. And I think playing in front of that crowd really prepared us to come to Omaha because we know that coming in, we're, we're not liked by a lot of teams and a lot of uh, fan bases. So we know we're going to hear it. And uh, I, think, I think playing in Greenville was the best situation for us to, to be prepared for Omaha. OK, any more questions? OK, we'll take one, one last one here. Eric. Hook inside Texas. Silas uh, Lucas was a guy who started the year out of the rotation and has moved into the number two role. What have you seen from him just off the field and how he's prepared in order to be successful in that role? Lucas has just matured so much each and every day. You know, he's growing and getting better. And coming in, you would never think that he would be in this situation because we had Tanner. But losing Tanner, he really stepped up and he asked questions to all of our stars. At the time, Tristan was a starter and he's a I don't know, fifth or sixth year, one of those two. Uh, he has a lot of experience. He has Pete, Tanner, the things that they do to prepare to start. And uh, he really put in the work, and I'm proud of him for that. You know, he's, he's really put the team on his back because whenever we needed him the most, he was there. And uh, he's going to continue to do well, and I'm excited to see what he will do in the World Series for us. Okay, guys, uh, we'll excuse you two, and uh, good luck tomorrow. Kevin Rodriguez, the SID from Texas. Kevin, raise your hand so no people know who you are. So you, if you have any other needs, go through Kevin, okay? Appreciate it. Yep. Okay. Thank you. And then we'll open it up for questions from... Yeah. Did I ask him about his boom box? <laughs> Yeah, we heard that. Okay, we'll start with Eric over here. Yeah, Eric Olson with the Associated Press. Uh, David, uh, you guys got 128 home runs, and I know you had mentioned that you guys like to think you can score in a lot of different ways. Uh, I guess that obliter obliterated your your program record for uh, season home runs. So I guess how do you account for that? It's not like 40 more than you guys have ever hit. Yeah, we've – we broke the record without Ivan. Uh, it's been really impressive. The, the record was 81, and it, it just kind of came in bunches, too. I, I, there, I really think there's a couple of things that contribute. One, uh, they answered the question as we're not really trying to hit home runs. And our ultimate goal every single day is to hit line drives in the middle of the field. Uh, they talk about it every day. They call them diamond cutters. And they're just trying to hit diamond cutters every day. 
Um, but I think when they learn how to use the opposite field gap and, and backspin that, then they're creating their swing path. And that swing path is the reason. And then you contribute to timing, rhythm, uh, strength. Uh, all those things play a part. We've also played in some conditions that were either very neutral or we've had a little bit more wind this year that was favorable. So I don't want to go there because I def definitely don't want to discard what they've done. But we've had some other factors that have helped that. And I truly believe that they don't work every day to go pull side home runs. Um, and it, you just become a better hitter doing that. So our goal is to become good hitters, and then the home run comes with it if, if you're on time and you've got some power. Mitchell Kutcher, CWS 247. Coach, you mentioned earlier how you lost Tanner Witt for the season. Uh, how was this team able to come together and overcome that? Initially, it was tough uh, because he's not only a, a weekend starter for us, but one of our better leaders uh, has a baseball IQ, so he's around helping new kids even though he's a sophomore. Um, but it allowed opportunity for guys like Lucas Gordon for maybe two or three guys in the bullpen to step up. And it really has helped Lucas become what he's become. I really think that Lucas could be our MVP for our, our pitching staff because without him, we're not here. Um, but it's been tough. Uh, I got a picture from him the other day in his pinstripe uniform with his glove and in his pitching stance in his living room. And he just send that to me like, Coach, I'm with you guys. So that's he's a heart and soul type guy. And uh, they they just had to. They had to overcome it. They had to move on. And um, unfortunate, but they did a good job of just moving on. Okay. Matt? Coach Max Olson from The <coughs> Athletic. When you think back to, to signing Ivan out of uh, Odessa, do you remember what you expected of him when he came into the program and sort of how did – how did, uh, you know, reality versus expectations, how do you look back on that? I could just look back and see him hanging out in our dugout and a little insecure and just hoping that he fits into the program and that he can be a contributor and, like we've said before, just very humble. And, and then thinking that he's just a an okay player. I, I never saw this coming. Uh, and now you started seeing signs of it once we got in the spring. And his power is different. Um, you know, you have guys that have 5 o'clock power, and then the game starts at 6.30. Uh, he's not a 5, five o'clock guy. He's a gamer. Uh, and there's guys that have that power that doesn't equate in the game. And he has he has game power. Um, but he he has the knack of, of staying through the baseball as well as anybody I've had. Okay. Austin Ulmer with Mavradio.fm. Um, Where is that? It's the local college radio station here in Omaha. So, gotcha. um, coming into this with as far as scouting report, Notre Dame has the best ERA in the field of all the teams. How has that kind of affected your scouting report and how you're going to approach it at the plate? We don't scout. We just roll out. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're good. They're, they're veterans. They know how to pitch. I think that's the thing. You know, there's a lot of big arms right now. A lot of guys throwing 95, but they haven't executed pitching. And I think Coach Lincoln and his staff have done a great job of just executing pitching. So I think for us, it's just to be ourselves, stay in the middle of the field in our mind and be in a good spot. Joe Cook, Inside Texas. Joe. Um, with all the changes that have happened with your pitching staff from when Tanner went down, how important has Silas been all year just to be that consistent guy, both in the clubhouse and behind the plate? Well, I'm really glad you brought that up, Joe, because it it should not be overlooked. He's We've played 67 games. He started 66 of them and played in the 67th. Um, he's just been rock solid. He's durable. But... He comes from a catching family. Dad caught in the big leagues. Uh, he came out of the womb basically being um, 
set up program, however you want to say it, to, to be that guy. And his body is, is very conducive to being a catcher. He's much more flexible than maybe he looks uh, and very durable. But I think the biggest thing that I could go to with our staff and Silas is trust. And they just really trust that, one, he knows how to work with each guy and get the max from him. Uh, one guy you got to joke with him on the mound, another one you got to kick him in the tail. And, and just understanding the staff and knowing how to get the max out of them. Silas has done an excellent job with that. But just uh, he, he's a rock. He's a foundation of that entire group. Okay, any more questions? Yeah, okay. Mark Garland, CWS 247. Coach, you guys had that string of games where you guys were struggling there in early April and going on those road games. Do you think that triumphing through a little bit of that adversity kind of helped you guys getting ready for this tournament? A hundred percent. I just I don't think you win championships without adversity. Every team. Uh, in 03, I was with Rice, and we were the number one team in the country, and we went through a spill where David Archma couldn't get anybody out as our closer. We had the big three. And uh, you can go all the way back to then to right now of – just fighting through different things because it's either going to make you better or it's going to break you. And if if it makes you better and you're talented, then I think you you can get back on track. And they just handled it. I, I think the thing that was most impressive is just there was no finger pointing, uh, whether they didn't like how they were being handled from a coach or, you know, they're not playing enough or whatever the case was. It just they continue to just try to get better, and uh, it sounds so basic, but our goal is just to get a little better every day. Uh, and if you can get there and be in that present, you got a shot. And they're a mature team that was willing to go through the distractions and not listen, and just keep trying to get better. Uh, and they did an awesome job of it. We wouldn't be here without their makeup, their mentality. Not just Silas, not just Trey but numerous guys on this team that have such a high character and a great foundation. Okay, Mike's got a question. Patterson? Coach Mike Patterson, Omaha World Herald. Can you tell us who your starter is going to be tomorrow night? Uh, Pete Hansen. What went into that logic of starting it? He started every Friday night for us this year. Sounds like good logic. <laughs> <laughs> I had to think that one out. <laughs> okay. Here. Okay. We have a question from the Zoom. All right. We're going to go to Danny Davis. Danny, go ahead with your question. Hey, David. Uh, I guess my pitching question got taken. Um, when you talk about that ad adversity, um, what did your team kind of show you um, this past weekend in Greenville with the rally in game two and then – you know, when you're that third game with all the delays and crazy fan base and all that stuff? Well, I think many people throughout the country of watching our game probably thought, you know, Texas had a nice year. Um, you know, had some adversity, had a few injuries, couldn't overcome it. Um, you know, move on to the draft, move on to summer ball. I think fan bases, naturally so, probably thought similar. Uh, but our team never – I never sensed one thing of panic. And it's just a tribute to our, our mental game. It's a tribute to our players, their their perseverance, their grit. But uh, truly has helped us along the way to become not only better baseball players but better young men and understanding that, you know, in the society that we live in where it's uh, – quick gratification, it's not the reality. And our kids have just worked and they've trusted each other. So we wouldn't be here if if it wasn't a unit like that. If it was a couple of guys, then you know we probably wouldn't have overcome it. But I think we have a team that's full of uh, winners and guys that just believe in each other, and they like playing, and they like playing together. So I never sensed any kind of panic uh, or even frustration down by five in the seventh of game two. Uh, we got a big hit from Trey. That's what we needed. 
We got a big home run from Douglas. That's what we needed. Turn it into a three-run game. And I don't think ECU gave in. Uh, I don't think they uh, per se melted or did anything wrong. We just went out and won the game. And that's kind of how it went. Okay, this will be our last question, Mike. Uh, Michael Preston, NCAA.com. David, one of your players mentioned how uh, as one of the, the heavyweight programs, other fan bases may not like Texas for, for whatever reason. For well, whatever reason. For whatever. Uh, Don't look at me. Does, to be in that situation, does that put a unity or a toughness? Does it become a weapon or, or something positive that your guys turn into? I, yeah, I think so. I think it just when you come to Texas, I mean, I took the job at the University of Texas from Tulane, Sam Houston State, spent nine years at Rice, um, two years at the University of Houston, and coached high school for 11 years. I grew up in the state of Texas, and I looked at the University of Texas as the pinnacle of college baseball. Those guys must be really something special. Those guys must get everything. They receive whatever they need. They have all the resources. And it's really not the case. I mean, we're another really good team. But I think from the outside looking in, you look at our situation, and I think it's built from the history of this program, the success of this program of 38 times in Omaha. People just kind of get tired of Texas, to be honest with you. And so we feed off of that. Uh, when we went to ECU, it wasn't about ECU. It wasn't about their fans. It's just about us. So we're just going to be us. We're not prima donnas. We are not uh, uh, overly gifted. We're just a hard-nosed bunch of guys that like baseball. And it happens to be at the University of Texas. In your own image. Thank you, David. All right, guys. Appreciate it.